All right, so uh, my name is Raul Ramirez. I'm the director for the Catch Wrestling Alliance. I'm here with John Strickland, uh, the director of American Hook Wrestling, uh, based out of South Carolina. Uh, thanks for speaking with me, John. Good to be here. Nice to see you again. Yeah, uh, likewise. Um, we have a few things we'd like to talk about. Um, I've seen that uh, you've been discussing online a lot uh, with regards to um, how the modern point system has changed wrestling, and in, in particular, um, you know, amateur wrestling, um, either style, whether it's folk style or Olympic freestyle. Um, can you uh, uh, share us share with share with us your thoughts on that? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> I guess just you know, being around wrestling the majority of my life, uh, which is close to half a century, my life. Kind of scary and probably know what I think about that, but um, no. So, yeah, I um, started getting interested. In, uh, I mean, I always have been since I've been in a catch wrestling. I'm interested in you know what made it different from made it different from freestyle, and of course, that's obvious. What makes it different from like Greco? But um, <clears throat> I started doing a little bit of research last year on how just even folk style in the United States has changed. Amateur wrestling has changed specifically college, when collegiate wrestling started. Um, <clears throat> at the rule set of college wrestling, like back in the 1920s would have, and 30s would have been a lot more, it would be very similar to what we see in catch as catch can now, what we see in the tournaments and the, those kind of rules. Um, <clears throat> you had basically, um, you you uh, they didn't have the points system. Like, so there was no points for, you didn't get two for takedown, two for reversal, you didn't get near fall points. Um, you, was, there were 20 minute matches actually. And uh, you either won by pin or they went to a judge's decision. Originally they had two people, two like timekeepers in each corner. They would keep up what would be kind of equivalent to riding time. So who was on top? how long they controlled, how long they stayed there. And then if there wasn't a pedophile at the end of 20 minutes, they would award the decision to the wrestler who they considered controlled the action, um, who dominated the position. And then it changed after that, and it went to what was a right. So, yeah, they would go to – so they changed the rules again, and then it became – or they went by, you know, the judge went by or okay, he, he was on, you know, he was riding him for like 16 minutes of the match or he was on top for 16 minutes out of the 20 minutes. So he wins. And then they changed it and, you know, they went back and forth on college wrestling the rules a lot. Since then, I mean, even, you know, they went for two point takedown, then to one point. Interesting point, early college wrestling was in a ring. Um, like a boxing type ring on a canvas instead of a smooth like vinyl mat um, you know they didn't have rules for stalling or you know you know locking hands or illegal grips or any of that stuff so it was very basic it was what I would consider you know when we look at wrestling uh, historically wrestling you know obviously has been around for you know, centuries and centuries and centuries. I mean, going back probably even to like Mesopotamia, probably, you know, the old Persian empires uh, throughout uh, India, throughout everywhere in Africa, throughout the whole world. Um, and it was, you know, a combative system of conquering a person, I guess, you know, two men fighting and one man wins. Uh, if you think about that, that way existed a lot longer than present amateur wrestling has existed. Amateur wrestling has been around, oh, you know, a hundred years. That's that's not a long time. Um, and since then, they keep want to make it safer. You could read where um, they would say, like the NCA would say, actually in their meetings, you could read their minutes, and they would say things like, "We want to make it more entertaining, so we want to make it faster action." 
So let's reduce it. Let's break it down into periods now. Let's add all these points and let's go down to this. And so today we're getting into these seven minute matches that are governed by points, both of being a guy who former high school coach and being and coaching guys and catch. I can tell you certain things I w would be the same. Maybe uh, I might teach a single or a double leg the same. But with my catch wrestlers, I might teach, um, you know, throwing in legs the same. But the strategy I would be di completely different because I, for high school, I would be more point driven about really focused hard on scoring my two on my takedown. And, uh, being aggressive, attack, 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 oh, yeah. and catch. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. If that's the greatest okay. idea in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Then, uh, kind of, well, yeah. Then, yeah. Kind of, we'll see. Maybe it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. You can like do a lot of takedowns, and that'll be his strategy. Like trying to win my points. Um, you know, and like say, like he'll get a takedown, and then not really secure the guy once the guy's been taken down. Like he'll let him get up. And um, that's like a, an amateur strategy where you wouldn't necessarily see that in catch wrestling because you, you 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 don't just go for a takedown to not get control. You know, it's like a, um, you'd want to follow through, and that I'm not quite seeing that all the time with some of the, the amateurs. Well, yeah, and you know, you remember when we were going out to Iowa, we had to lay over in Dallas, Texas. And we ran into John Smith, a coach at Oklahoma State, you know, former Olympic gold medalist. He and I were, I remember him saying, you know, some of the stuff he grew up with as a kid, you know, the arm, the side rolls and things like that. He goes, you don't see as much today because it's such a fast impact game. Uh, not only do you have to stop at the end of each period, but matches are stopped throughout the, the course of those period. Consistent battle. So you have to be explosive for – minute, minute, half, maybe two minutes, you know, and then you're not. And it's odd, oddly enough, I mean, because he said, yeah, the wrestling, it's, even he's just talking about flow style, how it's changed since he's been in it, since he was a kid to where he's at today as a coach at Oklahoma State. Um, and interesting enough, I'm reading some stuff right now that Ed Lewis had written. And uh, what Ed Lewis has said and what uh, – from reading some of Ed Lewis's stuff to reading stuff from Joe Stecker to the things I know Henry Colin taught uh, Billy Wicks, uh, the things that I know August Sapp has said to Dick Cardinal, um, they, don't, they, they all seem to be in the same camp of, I would say that catch the old timers or the wrestling was more defensive um, because it could be, because they basically said, hey, we're going to wrestle until there's a winner and there's going to be two ways to win. We're going to make you give up or we're going to pin you. And, you know, for myself, I like that. I mean, I wish the tournaments didn't have time limits, but I know that's, you know, not real practical for today's society. And we got things we got to go do. We might still be sitting out in Iowa right now watching matches or not, but we should be fine by me. My wife might leave me, but, um, <laughs> You know, so I found that very interesting that it's ch it changes, um, like I say, my strategy. I mean, like, you know, we're in cash wrestling. If I, you know, let's just say I was in ref, I was on the bottom position in ref in the third period of the amateur match. And if I'm winning, you know, I just got to make sure this guy doesn't really, he's not going to give me a ride time. I don't even really need to hit a stand up. I hit a stand up, I run the risk of him taking that takedown and getting two points scored on me. Uh, let's just say I'm up by a point and it gives him a win, you know. And so if I'm in catch, I might want to go for the double wrist lock, you know. Or if I'm down by a few points, I got to hit that stand up. Or they try to get back to my feet to score those two points again. And uh, today's wrestling is more about the feet. And I've heard Gable talk about this recently and everybody, and it's kind of I've seen a lot of people get that confused with catch. Like they'll say, Oh, I spent like, you know, I mean, I, people can run their practices the way I want. They want, if I've got six hours a week to train guys for catch, we're not going to spend three hours on takedowns. And I know people that are spending 50% of the time. We're not going to do that. Uh, the matches can't be one on your feet. So I'm not going to focus on that. 
the reason we do the takedowns are to get the matches to the ground. So, you know, somebody's going to take somebody down. But then somebody's got to beat somebody when they get down. So, um, you know, you could have uh, – <laughs> you could be a guy be like, well, my takedown suck. Well, mine don't. Well, good. Take me down so we can start fighting. But, um, you know, I, mean, I believe in the importance of that takedown, but you know what I'm saying, I think, off that. So I think that's one of the things that, um, you know, it changes the game so much because – uh, I mean, I think people in general want to think submissions, you know, the hooks and the rips or what, or the difference between catch and folk style. I mean, there are a lot of similarities, you know. I mean, I learned in college to hit sit-outs, hip high stand-ups. And Billy Wicks taught me sit-outs, hip high, but he didn't do stand-ups. Oddly enough, he didn't teach stand-ups. He didn't like them. He would even say, so let me think, say this, John. So we come out and wrestle. One of us takes the other one down. I get behind you. Objects so for the takedown so we can get down and wrestle, and then you're going to stand up. It's yeah. like that's like running another ring or something. No, we're here to wrestle. Get back down here. Yeah, exactly. That's actually one of the things that um, happened to me when I was training at the Snake Pit. Um, I uh, was having a tough time. I was underneath for a while, and then I decided like to take my chance and stand up. And then uh, uh, that's when Coach Roy Wood was just like, "Well, why did you stand up?" It's like. You're going. You're starting at zero again. So you should have tried for some kind of reversal to keep it on the ground. And I think that's the problem. People go, well, you always can't. And I think you can, but it it, it, is, it is going to be a length of time. It could be a length of time. Uh, I think people have to understand that catch wrestling wasn't designed to be a five minute fight. Mm -hmm. I, and Lewis said in the opening part of this book, "Take your time." Take your time. You'll never hear a college wrestling coach say, take your time. Uh, <laughs> you know, it is, it's, it's, and it is. I mean, when I coach for amateurs, I'm coaching guys to be aggressive, aggressive, aggressive. Catch, I'm coaching guys to, to action, to create a reaction, to hit another action. You know, that chess match of back and forth. And realizing that, you know, uh, you know, you, I mean, you know, it's like if you're two football, you, you know, it could be like I'm going to use so probably more people catch, you know, wrestling as, as a world thing and not just American thing. We'll use uh, European football or soccer as we call it in the United States, which I don't know a whole lot about, but I do know the score that you got to put a ball and a goal. So if you have a team that can hold the ball the whole time and they and they shoot, 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 but they don't, they don't score, they haven't accomplished anything. They don't get style points, you know. They were defended the whole match, and then you know all of a sudden, the other team gets one shot and they score, and it's over, you know. Now whether yeah, they might have been outplayed for the entire time, but in the end, they won, you know. And I think that's the one of the things I always liked about cash wrestling was that you can win. Um, so many, you know, people think it's only two ways, but they're really is complex because you could be in situations where. You, you've been getting out wrestled or you can have a guy just drilling you into the mat, just taking you down repeatedly. And then that 15th time he takes you down, you know, you reverse him and pin him or, uh, you know, get to hear him yell and submit. I mean, to me, that's appealing. And all. I won't, I don't like for a judge and I don't want a, a structure system of opinion, which is what a point system is, is an opinion. I don't want opinion to decide my wrestling match. I want me or my opponent to decide the match. Oh, man. That's, that's what I like. so true. I mean, and, and it, you hear that not only from like, amateur wrestling, but then you also hear it in a lot of these jiu-jitsu tournaments. Um, people are losing by all kinds of like points or advantages, whether, whether or not they were submitted or pinned. And it's like heartbreaking to the competitors to lose that way. Yeah. So you mentioned uh, Strangler Lewis. Um, could you tell us a little bit about um, the actual strangle? I mean, because um, uh, it seems like it was more of a, like a headlock type technique, and uh, they kind of played up the the actual strangle aspect for uh, the audience. I mean, is this is this true, or can you enlighten us on that? 
No, you know, I think you're right. I think his headlocks could be so painful that they cause, for one thing, they would cause some people to, you know, I don't know if it became them jokingly say I was going to pass out from the pain or uh, he would cut off that blood flow. But he wasn't like, you know, going around slapping people in the rear neck. It's like, you know, I mean, you know, of course, it was an MMA or dog or something. Certainly, by all means, go for it. But, you, you know, he has showed Billy Wicks several of his headlock variations, and they hurt a lot. So, um, you know, there's, to me, there was, from what I was shown, there were like four of them. None of them strangled me. But they all, one made me th think my neck was going to break. The other one thought my, my jaw was going to like, you know, bottom jaw go, go, bottom jaw go this way, top jaw go this way, just break. And, uh, and then one's on the, on that cheekbone. You just, you just feel like it's just going to crack, which actually Chris Rogers, um, broke a guy's orbital with, uh, the Ed Lewis headlock, by the way. So, <laughs> perks. <laughs> yeah. uh, one other thing I wanted to kind of ask you about was um, I saw an article online. Actually, uh, I think uh, uh, someone we both know, Anthony Pacek from uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, he posted a, an article uh, that I thought was interesting. Um, it was about, uh, like, if it's not the end of the world if someone takes your back. And uh, the article, um, was on a jujitsu website, I believe, and uh, kind of like the points that the, the author was making were, were like, um, you know, a lot of a lot of people assume that if someone uh, jumps on your back, that it's like the beginning of the end. But you know, there's so many different techniques, uh, and then we've seen in, in in this case, the the person who wrote the article give a lot of uh, a lot of like examples from MMA where people you know were able to get out, and then when you when they get out, it's like the person who who is uh, who was on the back. A lot of times, they end up on the bottom, and then they just get pounded. Or uh, so in 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 catch wrestling, I noticed that um, you know, like you say, if someone who does uh, Brazilian jiu jitsu, and if they see that we don't necessarily mind that some when someone jumps on our back because um, we can you know we can do a lot of reversals and stuff, and also there are no points in in jiu jitsu. Um, there is like it's like a four point move you can jump on someone's back so um, um, do you kind of feel or do you kind of agree that it's like it's because I feel like it's not necessarily like a, that big of a deal um, but I think because of like points and stuff it, it becomes a big deal uh, for people in that kind of point well, system yeah let's hold points out to the side here for just for a second well, yeah, I'll answer in two parts with points and then without so we'll start without points any position's a big deal if you can finish me in it. I mean, standing up, if you can front face lock me or head lock me or double wrist lock me from a standing position and submit me was a big deal. You know, uh, uh, head on position, which when I say head on, a lot of people in today's grappling community, these kids don't know what head on is. North, south, on your knees, I guess, or feet, not on your back. But anyway, uh, I mean, that could be a big deal. I don't really ride backs. I ride hips. I ride legs. I ride ankles. Um, I ride backs can get you reversed uh, pretty easily. It turns out I, I like to catch guys when a guy turns out. We're going to be on our feet. We're not going to be stuck underneath. Um, and have you seen yourself, you know, when uh, I was trying to protect a knee in Los Angeles, I was very okay with telling my opponent he could have my back to start the match. I was going to give him – the old amateur saw him start behind me in the advantage. Um, I would have taken top, but I don't think about it. I said, hey, you want to come down and start on bottom? I'll start on top. I don't think he probably agreed to that. Mm -hmm. So I well, I guess I'll try this. But, you know, the thing of it is, is if you get the back, you got to be able to do something with it. And I coach guys, and in fact, I know my guys get tired of hearing me say this. I put guys in bad situations. I mean, we we don't drill like, defending this or that or getting out of it. We, we're like, what's worst case scenario situations we get caught in? Well, this is a worst case situation. Worst case scenario, this is a bad place to be. Or somebody just choking you unconscious. This is a bad place to be. He's got you in the channel. All right, get out. Let him start with a choke on. Let him start on your back. 
get out. Learn to defeat it. Learn to defeat the attacks they're going to try. Learn how to stall them. Learn how to you reduce. There's certain things I can do with my hip and, and take away 50% of their attack. Certain things that I can do um, in, in preventing that. So, you know, now if you're talking about with the gi, we might be talking a different, a little bit different ball game, obviously. I think that makes it a lot easier. I mean, you can just hang on to somebody's clothing. My five-year-old could hang on to my back with a gi. Um, but from in a wrestling thing, you know, get behind me. And uh, actually, again, I'm going to that Ed Lewis book. Ed Lewis is talking about this. You know, Dick Cardinal's his strategy. Billy Wiggs would talk. This is one of the things I noticed a little different between us and the British wrestlers where they didn't mind wrestling head on as much. And I always like to drag and go behind the guys and, and ride the guys. and. Um, I, and jujitsu and I have that, or the way I was taught, have that in common that we do like to get behind you if we can. Um, but, uh, you know, I got to be able to do something with the position and, um, you know, so I don't, I don't see it as a big deal. Uh, if you're fighting in MMA, you gotta be aware of the punch situation, but, you know, we, I don't think it's a big deal. Um. But, you know, now, now, if you add in the points, then, you know, if they're having matches based on points, then I don't know how many points they get for getting their back. So it could be a big score. It could be like, you know, getting back points, getting near fall points and collegiate. So it's like, yeah, I really want to get those if I can. So uh, it's, it's really hard for me to speak, speak for it on points because I'm just honestly, I'm, I'm ignorant to their point system. So I really wouldn't know. Yeah, no, but I mean, that's the thing. I mean, it becomes important because of like a point value, you know, like, um, um, you know, because a lot of people um, are getting or they're, they're familiar with that point system. But then also yeah. um, when they start viewing grappling uh, through that lens of the point system. So then, um, sure, I mean, yeah, you can you can get a rear naked choke uh, by taking someone's back, which, you know, can totally end the match. Um, but you know, like what if you get on someone's back that, you know, is really good at defending against the choke, then it becomes problematic. And, um, we've seen that, uh, in jujitsu matches, but then also in professional MMA where people aren't able to finish, uh, from the back. Um, well, and, uh, and so there's so many different kind of flavors and even styles of jujitsu guys out there today. I do know that, you know, guys, yeah. But when I started, when I started taking jujitsu back in the early nineties, you know, everything was pretty traditional, closed guard type stuff. Things I noticed then, like I said, and this doesn't count for everybody. This was my experience. They'd get, you know, so they would go, "Okay, I'll get your back." All right, because I'll hip smash on my turn out. And when I hit smash and turn out, they'll go, "Okay, you're turning me underneath you, but I'll go into guard." I'm like, uh, okay, cool. I'd rather you be there, so I'm not carrying your weight. But so, you, you know, I think that um, for, and, I mean, from wrestling, I mean, you know, you can even watch amateurs, high school and college wrestling. I mean, you're used to guys throwing in legs and getting out, and you got to be able to get out of legs. And that's it's kind of that same concept, I think. Um, but, you know, but there are different, you know, that being said, I understand that choke's coming, and I'm going to – I'm certainly prepared for that rear naked choke. Uh, and uh, understanding how the choke – actually, understanding how anything works is really better than learning a bunch of techniques to stop it. Because if you have the knowledge of how it works, uh, your brain will automatically say, hey – just like if you're drowning, you need air. Ooh, okay, you're being choked. You need to you need to get the blood flow going on at least one side of the neck again, and uh, you, you can pretty quickly come up with. Now, again, I think though points you know obviously changes it. Uh, I think I do think getting behind somebody on their back is to me. I think it might be my favorite position as a wrestler. Besides having a guy on his blades on his back, because of uh, I've I like to do a lot of toe holds and I like to 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 um, what so to me it is a strong position 
that I focus on a lot of time in and a lot of time I get now. And, you know, like I said, to start with, and I won't keep rambling, but if you are, it doesn't matter, you know, if somebody can put you in something in a position and, you know, you can go, well, well, apparently you got beat, you aren't, you know, or you weren't in control. You didn't have position, you didn't have control. So whether it be the guys on the back or whether it be head and arm or whether, it, you know, whatever it might be, uh, it could be standing. If you got somebody that can just stand and, and, and just submit you from standing, all of a sudden the world's afraid to even tie up with a person. Um, so I just think it's one of the, the, the areas for jiu-jitsu can attack you off of the back mount, guard, side mount, mount, head and arm, that kind of thing. Is to me is they have locations. Like if they had a big fortress, these are the areas they have their guns, their cannons they can fire from. They can attack from the back. They can attack from the guard. They can attack from here. You know, as a wrestler, I like to get into scrambles and certainly use positions, but I would see some of the positions are a little bit more, you know, not, not quite, it's not quite the same, you know, um, but so I, I, you know, I don't know. I, I think, I don't think it, I, I would rather give up my back than put my back on the mat any day of the week, whether it be in the street or at Naga or in a cage or against Freddy Krueger hurt a little bit of my dreams, you know? Yeah, that's a good point for many so, reasons. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, so, so, but anyway, yeah. Now, again, I don't, I don't, I, so I don't know their point system that well anymore at all. So I can't really, you know, uh, I mean, a jumping, like if you were to, like, I would say you're going to jump guard. And I want those catch guys that never complain. You know, a lot of catch guys you see on social media complain with a jiu-jitsu guy they call we call it butt scooting or he jumps guard i don't complain because to me it's like cool man i don't have to hit a tape now i probably get to salvage my knee a little bit longer maybe i'll get to roll again after this you know about that at all and i i think if you're going to be competent in the style that you do you can't you have to be able to to, to go against jiu-jitsu guys you know go against samba guys go against cheeto guys you know um and at the same time, I like the idea of having catch matches only, strict, you know, within catch wrestling. Having it with a catch, this is a sport of catch wrestling, and this is a catch wrestling rules. And if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. Says, hey, John, we we're having this thing. Do you, you want to send one of your guys to compete against this guy as a black belt or a brown belt, whatever? And like, yeah, absolutely. You know, would you be more be more than happy to? So, um, you know, yeah, no, that's a great point. Then I think it kind of goes along along the lines of what you were. Uh, mentioning earlier where it's like it's all about understanding the principles of a lot of the positions and a lot of the submissions so regardless of whether or not as a catch wrestler you go up against someone who does sambo or jiu-jitsu um, you'll at least understand um, kind of where you are during the like during the scramble or during the different like while you're you might be stuck in a, in a difficult position but you should be able to understand enough where you can either get out or uh, you know reverse the person or get your submission instead or block their submission you know early on before it gets uh, too late so uh, yeah i think that's kind of the main or that's like a, a major point where it's it shouldn't necessarily matter who you go up against but you should understand a lot of the principles of like wrestling and the positions and the submissions yeah, I mean, I think it's like anything, you know. I mean, rock climbing can be extremely dangerous if you've never done it and you find yourself on the side of a cliff, you know. Um, you, you know, uh, um, you know, working with big cats can be very dangerous if you don't have any experience at it. Uh, yeah. Driving drunk at 90 can be, <laughs> but, you, but you get what I'm saying. I mean, just having experience in it and understanding what you can do and what you can't do. And certainly, is it in a, is, are you in a good position? No, it's a disadvantaged position, but it's not a position that you just go, Oh, I'm done. You're giving up. Then that's when you're done. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. All right, John, I know I'm uh, keeping you up late. So um, I want to 
just thank you for uh, giving us your insights on a few different uh, really important subjects that I've been seeing kind of circulating around the internet. Um, yeah, I just want to thank you for uh, giving us your time. Well, man, I'm glad you, you thought about me and hit me up. Always enjoy talking catch wrestling. And, oh, yeah. You know, um, is like what's the best way for people to find out about American Hook Wrestling? Is it is it your Facebook page or? Uh, yeah, Facebook, um, uh, Facebook page is American Hook Wrestling, whatever on Facebook, <laughs> and we've got like five of them, I think. Which we didn't didn't mean that that was by design. <laughs> like the IT guy started building them, and I was building them at the same time. I didn't realize that we were both doing it, so we're like, okay, well, we got these pages, and we just. They're there, but you can contact me through any of them or get a message to me. Or you, if you, you know, somebody wants to just email me directly, they can at um, uh, catchwrestler1971 at gmail.com or carneywrestler2 at gmail.com. So, um, you know, yeah, good, good stuff. So, um, Really, really like, really, really like wrestling, and I continue to try to try to coach guys as as, uh, as long as I can. Yeah, I hope as as I, I hope you get to uh, continue coaching as long for a lot longer. Truly, all right. Thank you for uh, yeah, sharing yeah. your time. So, all right. So we'll go ahead and sign off here, and uh, we'll we'll be in touch. All right. All right, thanks.